functions like this. So currently, just as, as it is here, you're coming up over the top at 12 o'clock. The foot's not bad. You can see, based on the low saddle position here, that your foot's going to come up from underneath your knee a little bit. So 1 o'clock, hasn't really moved. 2 o'clock, now you're kind of more in the um, uh, power band. At 3 o'clock, where gravity is terminating, so this is your point of gravity, your knee is slightly behind the, the ball of your foot, which is okay. You can see based on this curve here of where we're starting to be, and then because you're pointing your toe, you're not really creating enough torque or force through the bottom. And then here at 10 o'clock, kind of up to 12, you're really lifting this. So watch, so focus on this area, and I'm going to back up here for a second. And this is at a low saddle height. So I want you to notice that as I'm seeing this, your entire right hip is coming up. See that? Mm -hmm. Because your left foot is pushing your right foot over the top of the stroke. So in this particular instance, from where you are, you're probably robbing power from yourself back and forth. You have okay. it because of the difference in the legs? No, because oh. your seat's too low. Too, too low, okay. Right, and so it's forcing your foot up over the top. So it, it's counterintuitive, but it actually requires more flexibility to run a lower position than higher because your foot has to be lower to be able to have it come over the top without having a lot of muscular tension that's slowing your foot down. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're still kind of working on you from the waist down. So what I'd like for you to do is level your pedals out with your right foot forward. Go ahead and place your hands on the bar. Stand straight up on the pedals. So there's not really a magic number that we're trying to reach. What we're looking at is is ranges of your angles and then what is really best for you within the blended um, uh, you know, degree of certain things that we're looking at. And you know, and comfort and your performance and all of you. And everybody is gonna have natural things that are better uh, one than the other. The other thing too is this is a scenario because you have a difference in lengths that will have what's kind of a virtual plumb line. So the whole ideology of knee over spindle and all that stuff kind of goes right out the window when you have two different lengths. Okay. Does that make sense? Because if you fit to one, the other would be wrong. Right. So what we want to do here is kind of focus. You're going to have a slightly different angulation at each leg anyway based on the length. And so by the end of this, we'll find out what that blended number is for you. Okay. Go ahead and have a seat. I want you to go ahead and pedal. I want you to go a little bit harder. Ride, maybe not at the speed that you normally do, but try to try to beat yourself. There you go. All right, take it easy. Do you want me to get in the drop? Or just not yet. Okay. So if we, if you had a Q ring or asymmetric ring or a rotor ring, we'd also be looking at the phasing or application of that chain ring, kind of at the same time that we'd be doing this. So we'd see where we wanted to be relative for you to be able to pull more, uh, you know, to give you more of what you want. Did that feel better or worse to you? Um, seemed better. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're moving in the right direction. Is that, to me, is a better shape. Okay. So before so, it was wider than it was 
Yeah, it was a little flat on the backside because you were focused more on the extension. A lot of people are. It's a sensory thing where when you look at, when the, when the appendage extends, it's, it's very satisfying. The challenge is, though, that it takes time and it's microseconds for it to retract. And when you do so, because it's in, in, in movement, you lose your torque. So it's finding because based on the range of time that you want to ride relative to that height, of what that extension should be, and keep in mind that it's kind of moving at the same time. And so once again, we want to look at trying to fatten this through the bottom. And then if we were if you were to do this versus your power meter when you get it back on the bike, you can look at those subtle changes in height based on kind of what your power output is, and you'll read you have some of this in your book, but you need to have you need to create some baselines, either via speed or the same circuit. Something has to be big. You can't just go by the number because the number will vary. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so right foot forward. I'm going to stand straight up on the pedals. So this is a little bit different. Some folks will go, you know, kind of to a certain preset amount of numbers that the body has and we'll kind of you know, put you to that because they're best practices in terms of the median of that range, but everybody's a little bit different. Okay. Once again, kind of roll it up, get warmed up a little bit, give me about five seconds of me and you. Chasing down, chasing down. All right, stop. This is a good effort. You want a towel or a fan or anything? I don't mind the fan. Okay. to work on it being a little bit flatter through the bottom here of having flexion just because you can control the load, um, can help you float the gear out a little bit, but also help you accelerate a little. You know, actually the number here through the bottom isn't bad. Um, and you're what at an angle right now relative to your knee angle and in kind of in the medium of the range where a lot of people, especially in a, in a domestic shop set where they're going to do it dry on the bike with one of these, they're going to probably put you there, look at your knee relative over the spindle and that kind of stuff, where on a regular fit you'd be in trouble if no one had diagnosed that you were longer in one leg or the other. Um, and see the curvature of your hat here, now you have great flexibility. See the angle of your sacrum, how it comes up and it kind of slightly curves, you're holding yourself back into the saddle. So eventually what we want to do 
is get you to the point where you can, you're not pushing back, but you're rotating forward into it, mm -hmm. which will open the hip up, it'll elongate you here. Breathing will be a little bit better because as you go harder, you'll just push yourself farther back to try to get more extension mm -hmm. off of this thing, but you'll actually collapse your diaphragm slightly. Uh -huh. And in doing so, you have to hold your head up so aerodynamically you get worse rather than better. With me? Okay.